Hey there everybody, it's Mecha Draco coming to you with another video, and in today's video we're going to talk about best friends. So to start off, I just want to immediately say what the hell is going on in this world today, and more specifically, I guess, what the hell's going on in Australia, because this just seems like ridiculous to me. This 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 whole concept that I'm about to talk about right now is just sounds just ridiculous. Now, after reading the article and everything like that, it kind of makes some sense as to where they're coming from. Like, I understand where they're coming from, essentially, but it's just, it, it it's harder and harder for me to understand where all of this is coming from, and I just, I don't know. Let me, like, you know what, let me go ahead and just get us straight into the article, because this is the only way I can explain it. The article is the only way I can really explain this as best I can, so let's just jump right into it. So here we have our actual start of the video, of the, mm. So here we actually have the article, uh, Business Insider in Australia, and uh, just all I want to say is, again, I where what's going on with Australia? Because here's the title of this article, Schools are banning besties to protect students' feelings. We live in a world where feelings before reality, people. That's what it's all about, and they're starting with the young people. That's what they're doing. So let's go ahead and just read the article. Members of the royal family aren't often told when they can and can't do. But just a few days into his first year of school, four-year-old Prince George already faces a mandate, no best friends allowed, which is pretty crazy in my opinion, but let's move on. Thomas's, I'm not going to say that, the school George attends bans kids from having best friends. And how do you ban someone from having a best friend? You know what I mean? Like, that's something I really want to know. How do you ban someone? Marie Claire reports, instead, teachers encourage all students to form bonds with one another to avoid creating feelings of exclusions among those without best friends. But maybe they don't want a best friend. I mean, maybe they just haven't found the right person to be friends with. Maybe the reason why they're not friends with them is because those kids are assholes. Maybe they're not friends with them in just in general because they're just, they don't like them. Maybe the kids who are not who are not friends with anybody are the ones who are assholes. Who knows? Jane Moore, a parent whose child attends the school, explained the idea of recent episode of British talk show Loose Women. What a name for a show, I might add. There's a policy, she said, if your child is having a party, unless every child is invited, you don't give out the invites in class. Though I can somewhat understand that, because that sort of seems like that's just like the reasonable thing to do to be polite. Don't hand out a whole bunch of invites to a bunch of people that you're not going to invite. And obviously, if you're going to invite a, only a handful of people within the class, you don't want to show off that you're excluding everybody. I mean, just to be naturally polite, you wouldn't do that. When, what I would normally, what I would think you would normally do anyways, is you would just go up to the, their locker or their like cubby, I guess, if it's like a little kid. Uh, and you would just stick an invite inside their cubby. And you would just do that secretly so that way they know about it. But I'm also think I think about other people. I'm polite sometimes, so I maybe I think about that kind of crap every once in a while. So whatever. The trend of banning best friends has been growing for several years, and it's spreading beyond European borders to American schools as well. Some psychologists and parents argue kids become more well-adjusted when they have larger friend groups and can avoid negative feelings associated with feeling left out. Critics, however, say the approach robs kids of the chance to form valuable coping skills by grappling with the mild social exclusion when they're young, kids will, will emerge as a more capable, resilient adult, those, these advocates argue, which I completely agree with. I, I completely agree with that argument because that makes the most sense to me. The fact is, is that we're looking at individuals, we're looking at people who are starting to slowly but surely grow into adults and they're needing to learn a lot of different things a lot of coping mechanisms a lot of mannerisms and other things like that when it comes to dealing with people you know when it comes to actually interacting with the rest of the world this is a key part in their growing for them to learn different types of mechanisms and coping and everything like that you know because the fact is, is that that's the real world. The real world is not going to have people who are just like, let's all be friends. The fact is, is that best friends, people you're not going to get along with, 
you can't be friends with. You can't be friends with someone you don't get along with. And there are going to be people you don't get along with. There's nothing you can do about that. People who support kids having larger friend groups in place of best friends tend to view these larger groups as healthier for nurturing a sense of belonging. We try to talk to kids and work with them to get them to have a big group of friends and not be so possessive about friends. The director of counseling at Mary Institute of St. Louis told the New York Times. See, that's the problem is, is that the, that's going to happen no matter what. Possessive, possession of like an actual, like your actual possessiveness over your best friend, the the concepts of jealousy and other things like that. Those things are going to happen regardless. And if you don't get the idea of how, what those feel like when you're a young kid, start to actually get that idea of that's what, that, that's what creates brats. That's, that's honestly literally what creates brats. These people think that they, they have to have everything. So if they don't have everything, then they think that they're going to like, they're going to go crazy because they don't know how to cope with the idea that they don't get it. That they, they can't have someone to be their friend? Like, if, like what, think about that. What if they some, finally meet someone that they can't be friends with because that person just absolutely hates them? So then they start losing their minds because they can't understand how someone wouldn't be their friend. Because they were, grew up and in in, when they were younger, younger, just being told that everyone's their friend. Everybody's your friend. Everyone will always be your friend. Everyone should always be your friend. And now what happens? This is why we get what we get today. This is why we have the people that are as crazy as they are today and they're indoctrinating little kids and there's nothing we can do about it because no one's going to make any action. No one's going to take any actual action to stop this. That's the worst part about it. No one's going to stop this. This is just going to be something that happens and it's going to grow and eventually every school is going to have something like this in it. Like it'll be 10 years from now, something like that, but this is what's going to happen. Best friends with their tight bonds and inside jokes throw a wrench into the open environment school officials. Good Lord. What is that? Like, they throw it in a wrench in the open environment we're trying to... But whatever, man. I just... Like, what, what? what's wrong with an inside joke? That's like building a bond with somebody. You know? How can they... They're tight bonds. What's wrong with a tight bond? Like, what is... What, that feels like it's almost indoctrinating people into this concept of herdism. You know what I mean? It's like just they're, they're just combining everybody in this whole thing of everyone has to be for everybody. This is where they also start indoctrinating people into, into socialism is where they freaking do it. This is exactly what they're doing. That I, that's what I'm thinking. I'm having the, the tinfoil hat on right now. They're totally like totally indoctrinating people into socialism because the I, I, concept is they're going to go with the whole, the whole idea of, oh, it's open and, ex and, and inclusive and everyone is involved and everyone gets to do everything because everyone loves each other. Even though in reality, that's not how it works. But the fact is, is that they're going to do that and try to trick everybody. So that way, when they grow up, they start throwing this out there and then we get more snowflakes like the way we do now. And then eventually there's going to be too many of them for us to stop. And eventually there's just going to be so many of them that we can't convince them otherwise. We, we can't show them that they're wrong because we just can't stop them. Now I'm going to go on ahead and end the video there. I certainly hope you guys liked it. Uh, if you guys did, go on ahead and leave a comment in the box below. I'd really like to hear what you guys have to say about this particular video. I do apologize, it was a little short and I know we didn't go over the entire article, but let's be honest here, I don't think we really need to. This is insane to me, and I just, I don't even know how to respond. But please, feel like I said, feel free to leave a comment in the box below, and we can talk about it and discuss it. So, if you guys liked it, you guys know the drill by now. Go on and hit that like button if you liked it. If you loved it and you haven't already, go on and hit that subscribe button. And of course, as always, guys, good luck out there. And don't forget to have fun.